how stormy, how dangerous to be on a ship, how it is. He said, he said something, he said, when you are in a plane, you get into turbulence for a couple of minutes. If it comes to a couple of hours, then people begin. He said, on a ship, it could be for days. It could be for three days. He said, it could be for three days. On, on that particular uh, crew, the ship, he said, some army boys were there with the Nava boys. He said, almost all the army ones, even though they are military, all of them fainted when they, because they're not used to the storm on a boat, on a ship. So, but the Bible is saying, as big as that ship is, and I saw that device because I entered the control room, was just a small round thing like this that control it, not, not round, not round like this, that control it can determine if it goes like this. I asked the captain, I said, now the question is this, on a ship, on a sea, there is no sense of direction, there is no road sign. How do you know you are actually not going against your direction? He said, you rely on the equipment. He said, if the equipment fails, you might think you are going to Europe and you find yourself in, J in Japan. He said, you entirely re 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 rely on the equipment, nothing else, the navigation system. Praise the Lord. So now the Bible is saying, you see that rudder controls this ship. Now, let's see what the Bible now says. Look also at the ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. So even in that storm, the rudder was still able to keep them focused. Now, verse 5 says, even so the fung is a little member and boasts great things. So as little as, little as your tongue is, is capable of doing great things. Praise the Lord. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. Now, in verse it say, and the song. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. Let me tell you a story. Many years back, when we were young, my father bought a land somewhere, dust land. And he asked us to go there to go see or do whatever. Then we went there, um, child, children playing, we set something on fire. And we did it, and I think I must have done it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we're just watching the fire. It was just, just little stuff. And we're watching, we're doing our own stuff, fire was burning. But anyway, by the time half of the place burned, we now realize this might be a problem. <laughs> so now start to put it off, started burning other people's land. So I, I was now to determine, should we run away or should we stay? Now, many people have passed through that place. They saw us there. They will know we started it. And it just started with small things. Anyway, by the time we realized we're in trouble, we have burnt acres. And we didn't know how to stop it. There was no way to stop it anymore. And we thank God for a old man's wisdom. One man was just passing and saw us crying. He said, now, we were chasing the, <laughs> the fires all over the places, but the, the closer we are, the faster this thing is running. Now, we are chasing this side, it's going on this side. It's burning behind us. Now, this man just came, he saw us, he didn't say nothing. He just started removing the, the weeds on the path. I mean, long thing separated them. I'm not, I, we didn't know that kind of wisdom. And... He just contained them in an area, and eventually, they fire. Anyway, we have born many people's land. <laughs> but it started very little. That's what the Bible is saying here. Now, the Bible says, the song is so little, but don't mistake the size for what the song is capable of doing in your life. Praise the Lord. Don't mistake it. It says, and the fung is fire, a word of iniquity. This tongue is so set up among our members that it defies the whole body and set on fire the course of nature, and it's set on fire by hell. 
Praise the Lord. You don't know who someone is until they open their mouth and talk. But that's a different story. So the song the Bible is saying, now also in Luke chapter 21, the Bible now says, for I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. So I'll give you a mouth and a wisdom. Inside your mouth is your tongue. That wisdom is the word of God. So I will give you the word of God that when you declare from your tongue with your tongue, your enemies will not be able to reverse what you have said. So you can call for what you desire into your life and Satan won't be able to stop it. Yes. Your enemy will not be able to gain, say, nor resist. So they cannot stop it from happening. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Proverbs 18 and verse 21, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his leaves, it shall be filled. So your satisfaction in life, the life you live, will be a fruit of what comes out of your mouth. Now he said, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit, the fruit that is in there. Now, when we look through scriptures, this year, God said to us, it's our year of double honor. Praise the Lord. Yes. How many of us believe that? Yes. How many of us will say, it's my year of double honor? 2020 is my year of double honor. 2020 is my year of double honor. Double honor to you is what the promised land was to the children of Israel. All of God's word, which we receive now by prophecy, is God's promise. Now, let's look at the story of the children of Israel. God took them from Egypt, and they've gone through all kinds of things before they approach the land. In Numbers chapter 13, the Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So the Bible says, and Moses sent men to go see the land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord wanted them to, God wanted to show them what he wants to do, where he was taking them. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, what is faith? We walk by what the word of God says, not by what we see, not by anything in the realms of our senses. So whatever God wants you to see, or whatever God is saying for you to see, is all you need to see, not anything else that Satan is saying. So God said to them, let them go spy Canaan. The land that I promised them. Now, in verse 17, the Bible says, Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. Whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. Whether the land they dwell in is good or bad. Whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time, now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin, as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up. Now the Bible says. They went there. And they returned, verse 25, from spying out the land after 40 days. Verse 26. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran, Kadesh, at Kadesh. They brought back word to them 
to all the congregation and show them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It, it truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Verse 28, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendant of Hanak there. Now, they started by saying the land was truly filled with milk and honey. But when, when I saw the word truly, I knew they were going somewhere. Now, they said, but nevertheless, we saw the descendant Hanak there. Now, you and I know that the descendant of Hanak was where Goliath came from. So Goliath was an Hanakite. So now what they were saying is that the land had milk and honey, but that's where all the Goliath came from. Only one Goliath terrorized them, but plenty of Goliath are in that land. That's what they were saying. Praise the Lord. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. Etai, Jebusite, dwell in the mountains. Then Caleb quieted the people because Moses said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we were able to overcome it. But the men who have gone up with him, we are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. Anytime you see the promise of God, you never look at anything else that Satan is telling you. We don't fail in life, in our effort, in all the things we try to do, or to begin to look at the negative things around us. Now, Moses said, let's go at once. They said, we can't. I'm not going. The Goliaths are there. Now, anytime you fail to see yourself the way God sees you, you are going to see yourself the way the enemy sees you. If you read that story forward, another thing they saw, you are going to see failure. You are going to see somebody that cannot make it. You are going to see somebody that can't go too far. You are what you see. You are what you think. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are your thought. You will only live to accomplish, to become what you carry on your inside. Now, they saw Goliath. That's what they saw. Now, these same people, they had destroyed the army of Pharaoh, the greatest army in the world at that time. God did it without them blinking. But they didn't think about that. Now they saw Goliath and they forget about God. Now, when God makes a promise, it's not up to God alone to fulfill it. You have a spiritual responsibility to believe. And when you believe, how do you know you believe what God says? That's all that you see. Not anything else Satan is showing you. Listen, expect Satan to show you why the promise of God will not come to pass in your life. Expect that Satan will show you why to disconnect you from the provision. Satan will use anything and one of the weapons he would use was to try to show you something else. Was to try to show you the obstacles. You see, I've had many stories, and I've known, I've seen many people, and it's painful to see why destinies are tied down to some people's belief. Belief that does not exist. Beliefs, in most cases, that are mirage. And you can't change many people until you change the way they think. You cannot see failure and be successful. You cannot see failure in life and be successful. The life you live now is what you saw yesterday. No matter what you are praying now, you will only experience tomorrow what you are saying, what you see, what you are confessing now. Praise the Lord. 
how many of us understand, no, the Bible says, for us, a man thinking is that so easy. The children of Israel, and I, I did a research, yes, many years back, the journey from Egypt to Canaan is two hours flight till today. Now, let's say they didn't have a plane. It was 35 days walk. 35 days. If you still want to walk it today, it only takes 35 days. From Egypt to Canaan, they will only walk it for 35 days. But it took them 40 years. Let me tell you what happened. Slavery didn't leave them. You know, they left Egypt, but Egypt didn't leave them. And that was why several times in the course of that journey, they would tell Moses, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt. How do you say you want to go back to slavery? You can't even say you want to go back to prison because prison was an upgrade to slavery. Now they said, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt. We have bread in Egypt. We have meat in Egypt. Praise the Lord. Now, it took them 40 years because of their mentality. So God kept them going around to change their thinking because they can't enter Canaan with that mentality. Let me say something to you this morning. Some of us need to renew our mind to be able to have the right mentality for what we are praying for. Now, some of us are praying for prosperity. We are praying for promotion. We are praying to be called, but we can't even leave it if it happens. <laughs> are you following me? We cannot even occupy what the position we are praying for. We don't have the right mentality to live the lifestyle of the prayer we are praying. So some of us might become a stranger in our own desire. So God kept them going around the same place for 40 years trying to change their mentality. Now, their mentality is a result of, now, if you don't see yourself become who God promised, purpose you to be, you can't be. If you don't, you are praying for it. Let me show you something in scriptures. But they say, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report. The Bible says, there we saw the giant and the descendant of Anak, verse 33. I want to show you something in here. I want to show you where they said they, they we look like grasshopper to them. In their own eyes, even in our even ourselves, when we saw ourselves now. In verse 33, the Lord bless you, Pastor Kojo. There we saw the giant, the descendant of Hanak. Now, the Bible says, the descendant of Hanak came from that giant. So, uh, Goliath is an Anakai. So, the, what they are saying is that all the people there, they are nine footers. Fine. We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so, we were in their own sight. Now, the question is this. How do you know what is in their sight? Is somebody following me? How do you know what they are thinking about you? You know how many people are in slavery today? I said, well, the way Pastor Mewa look at me, he hates me to death. He doesn't like me. The moment I come this way, I see him go this way. The media called him to come and say something in emergency. He said, it's me he ran away from <laughs> We were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. So they disqualified, uh, it wasn't grasshopper, God was taken to Canaan. They disqualified themselves from God's promise. These same people, God had done all kinds of things, never seen before miracles through the journey out of Egypt. Now, let's see how it goes. Now, I'm talking about uh, the promise of God, the fulfillment of the promise of God, and our position and our mentality. So, they started saying in the early, in the early part of verse 
in chapter 14. They said, let's appoint another leader. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's, let's, let us select a new leader. They say, if this one won't go back to Egypt, let us go back. Now, in verse 6 of chapter 14, the Bible says, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their cloth, and they spoke to So, two people. So, many a times, popular opinion doesn't mean it's true with scriptures. I'm going to tell you something, and I pray you'll be able to receive it. It's your fault by associating with people that are negative. It is your fault to continue to abode with negative people. With, you can control your time. Well, it's not affecting me because they can't change my mind. It will slow you down. So 12 people, 10 people majority say we can't, and the entire nation agree. So that's why they, those two tore their own cloth. Praise the Lord. I want to show you how God sees it. In verse 11, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them. So when God made a promise, he wanted you to look at, his, at the promise based on his own integrity and his own record. I mean, of course, if you look back, you believe God does miracles. I mean, you have one or two things. Either he did to you directly or do to somebody that you know this is an act of God. Then how many of us know, believe that God is capable of doing what he says he will do? You truly believe? Yes. You truly believe? Yes. You know anything God says is capable of doing? Yes. Then my question is this. Why do you struggle to follow through? Why do you allow your faith and confidence in God to be shipwrecked? The prophecy you don't believe is not empowered to come to pass. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Blessed is she that believes. There shall be a performance of those things that were told her of the Lord. So now, the question is this. It's not enough to say, I believe. If you believe, it will show in your life. If you believe, it, people will see you, they will know there is something you have heard that they, they haven't heard. There is something you know that they don't know. Praise the Lord. So now, the challenge is to us believing whatever makes a Christian com complain like an unbeliever, you never believe God. For example, if I know we have our party affiliations and all those things, but if you think your success in your career and your business is tied to who is in the White House, you never believe God. If you believe what is happening in Wall Street, if it's bad news or good news for you, you never believe God. Because God's wisdom will circumvent all those things and still make things happen. No, no matter what happened in Wall Street, it won't be anything compared to in the days of the famine in, in scriptures. Isaac prospered inside famine in a foreign land. And the nation, the host nation, the Bible says, and they envied him. Genesis chapter 26. Are you following me? So God is God. Every born again believer must carry a mentality that says my case is different. Someone else's bad news or evil report not enough to make you cast down your head. Many of us, we give up, we surrender too soon. Sometimes when we can't seem to see some future ahead of us, we just make some decision, rash decision, and jump into the devil's trap. Are you hearing me? 
Now, what you were running from, what Satan wants to happen, you now make it a decision because you can't see too far. Or you are looking at reports, negative reports. Some of the things you have had here several times, when we're moving to California, I, had an, I have an auntie, she stayed there in the uh, East Coast, Indianapolis, and uh, she's Pastor Chris's friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know they were friends until when Israel was born and she came. And they saw. <laughs> they grew up together. In, they, they were raised together by, in Kano. Now, listen, she's in real estate. She said, don't go to California. It's not California. I said, why? He said, buildings are expensive in California. He said, here, you get beautiful for next to nothing. I said, I what if we have building and we don't have people? He said, no. He said, Cali uh, uh, it, it, it's expensive. These are reports. You know how many people have relocated because of, because of cost of housing from California? They relocated out of the will of God to the will of themselves. Is somebody hearing me? Now, this is the truth. Where God wants you to be is where your supply system is. May you not move out of God's will. Amen. Now, and I know the comparison in the, in the real estate thing. My auntie told me, check the prices of houses in California. Check, 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 check. Now, you know that by the grace of God, in dominion life, building is not what we sweat over. Sweat, we, 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 we sweat over. Every building we desire, we get. Yes. Cheaplessly. Is that not it? Yes, sir. We were 60 people, less than 60 people, children included, when we bought our first building in Oakland for a million dollars. Effortlessly, we bought this one, 3.5 million. Now, I'm talking about how God will fulfill his agenda, regardless of what people are saying around. As long as you are aborting it, now, you are not relocated, but you are complaining in your heart the houses are too expensive in California. There's no way somebody can buy. And you are little by little window shopping in another state. That is partial disobedience. It will disconnect you from the flow of what God has for you where you are. That's why the Bible says, if your high be single, your whole body will be full of light. If your high be single. Now, partial and delay obedience is also disobedience in the spirit. And I don't know how it got into that, that side of it. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. This is what the Lord said to them. This is how they see themselves. How you see yourself in most cases is determined by news, negative things you hear around. Somebody say economy is not good. Then you believe it is not good. I've never believed such a report. I have never believed such a report. A bishop told me at the early part, which I've said before in Oakland, he said, there is no church building in Oakland. He said, I've been here for 50 years. I was born there. My father was a bishop. I took over this church. I was, I've been here for 50 years. If any building will pop up for building for church, I will know. But our building on Macarthur Boulevard pop up. And he didn't know. <laughs> The bishop of the church across from us in MacArthur, I can't remember the name of that church, Cornerstone, walked to me. He said, right in my nose, how did you get this building? He said, young man, who do you know? <laughs> if you will only see and believe what God says and destroy every other thing that is speaking against its fulfillment in your life, you will find yourself in God's promised land for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go back to our story. Now, the Lord now said to them, God said, the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them, 
Every time you look at the opposition against what God is saying, God said, you don't believe me. That's what happened to them. God said, they have rejected me. Simply because they were talking about giants. I'm talking about promised land. They were saying giants. God knew they were the Hanakites in that place. He said, I will strike them with the pestilence and the scenario. In other words, I will disconnect them. They will no longer have anything of my inheritance. Now he said, I will replace them. I will make them you a nation. Great. Said, In other words, I'm still going to prove my mightiness, my, my, my power. I will only use it through other people. And Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear it. For by your mind you brought these people from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land that they have heard that you, their God, you are among these people, you have seen them face to face. Now he says, they will say, you take them out of the promised land, and you were not able to take them to where you promised them. Now if you kill these people as one of them, then the nations which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring these people to the land which he is sought to give them. Therefore, he killed them. In other words, they say, you were the one that failed. Then, the Bible now says, Moses prayed, he prayed, he entreated with God. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned, according to your word. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have not put me to test now, these ten times have not heard my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers. Nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. Now let me ask you, what is that rejection? The rejection was simply because they were looking at problems that would be against where God was taking them. Take your eyes off obstacles of life. Take your eyes off all difficulties. No one can fail until you settle for failure in your thinking. Are you hearing me? Don't you know that the beauty of God's testimonies is when you prosper in an adverse situation? <coughs> when you made it, where it was naturally impossible to thrive. They say all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. Why don't you think that even the storms, some difficulties that you see in life, some problems in life, is that the name of the Lord be glorified in the hand? Don't you know you may never have a testimony if you didn't go through some storm in life? You know, I've seen many testimonies. One thing I saw, or one of our sister's testimony here, you know, what's the name of Sister Stella's market in uh, Oakland? Durant. I knew when she moved into that place. For whatever reason, they moved out to the back. Where after the main store, you go through some hollow places, almost nothing happening, then at the back. That's where she started from. That's not for somebody to say no. But you know what happened? Just a few years down the road, there was a change in the city planning. They closed the main entrance. They decided to take the main entrance to the back. <laughs> and as you enter the mall, Astor was the first one on your left. Yes. <laughs> because Sam, you will fear God if you know where it was before. It's like this was an entrance to the mall, right? Astor was in our bookstore at the back, after the cafe. The city came, they shut down this place. They said, we will not take the entrance to the back. So as you enter, the last one now became the first one. Yeah. I've, I've seen it several times. Last time I was there, I was taking a picture. I said, I fear God. 
All things work together for good to those that love the Lord. All things work together for good. You may appear to be at the last number now, but you won't be there for too long. Because God is still working it out on your behalf. You, you may appear to have been forgotten and everything looks bleak. But the Bible says all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. If you work it out for her, it's going to work it out for you. This God is faithful. The choir sang, I call him holy because he has been holy to me. I call him faithful because he has been faithful to me. Amen. Don't ever look at negative circumstances. Don't look at it. All things work together for good. To those that love the Lord, all things. Now, I'm trying to say in here, when you know all things work together for good, even when you don't know any scripture to quote, quote all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. Amen. And you see God working it out for you. Christians, you never confess failure if you don't want to fail. You never confess failure. Let's, let's, let, let's look at some scriptures. Let's look at some scriptures. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it elders obtain a good report. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse. Now verse 3, by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So God framed the word by his word. God framed the world. I, I told you a story, the, a revelation or, or a research by a neurosurgeon on Friday about the power of, 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 of the speech center of the brain. How every, everything in human's body, in the central nervous system, responds to this command of the speech center. They comply with what we say. So the moment you say, I am weak, they send weakness message to all the parts of your body. And before you realize it, they prepare to be weak. Praise the Lord. Now, from, story, from this story, we found out, now, that is a new revelation. Praise the Lord. But I said, it is not new to God. Because the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. So you want to be healed. Yes, I know you feel weak. But don't say I am weak. You say I am strong. Something is not in your can. Don't ever say I am poor. Don't you know the Bible said do not say to an angel in the Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it is an error. We have ministering angels assigned to every year of salvation, the Bible says. The Bible said don't say to an angel it is an error. Why? When you say, I am poor, I don't have enough, angels, they don't know to say, in that area, don't say that an angel, it was a mistake. Don't say that an angel, I was just joking, I didn't mean it. Because they execute it. So the moment you say nothing is working for me, they, they make sure nothing works. The one that was working before, they shut it down. Because when I say they excel in strength. So now, your finances may not be where it is. Say what the Bible says. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all my needs. I have abundance. You look at that account, you laugh, you smile at the devil. Devil, you think this will command my attention? Rubbish. God doesn't need what is in there today to determine your tomorrow. Amen. That's why when Christian, you just look at some situations, some just passing hours, and you now term yourself as a failure. I'm not doing well. Who told you you are not doing well? You only know where you are. Do you know what is next? You don't know the next chapter of your life. 
The God that knows tomorrow is not an author of confusion. It's not an author of evil. All things work together for my good. All things. Somebody declared all things. All things. Work together work for my good. Everything, Everything will work together, will work together for my good. How many of us know God can use your enemies to promote you? Yes. How many of us God can give, use your enemy to give you an information without they don't know they will do it? <laughs> Why do we spend too much time stressing over what Satan or what somebody is saying, somebody is doing? When the Bible, the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. Now, it didn't look, it's not looking good, but Bible says it will work out for my good. So what matters? Thank you, Jesus. Let's rise to our feet. Somebody say, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Somebody say, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Let me tell you, in the precious name of Jesus, Amen. there is no one under the sound of my voice this morning that will fail. Yeah. Because God has not created you to fail. Yeah. But God only wants you to see and comply with what is doing. May you not outrun God. Amen. A family moved to Texas years ago. Not many people are doing all those silly things. You know, in, you, know, you know, in our church now, but I will cover them. Three people have moved, they move back. <laughs> <laughs> One called me like two weeks ago. Because the officer said, he must come, he must get me, he must get me, because he was doing it at in in uh, Warner Creek from East Coast. Just last year, I said, Christian, don't move anyhow. But I said, there is a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof is well. Some of them are trap of Satan. I said, your thinking is that because I'm a pastor, you think if you move, we lose one member. That's how you all think. I said, people that say they want to move, I bless it because I believe they should move. But I saw some people, I said, I don't think that's what God is saying. There's somebody we know, you and I. He, reloc <laughs> he relocated out of God's will about 15 years ago. He said, for the, he said, I thought I'd be able to be a homeowner there based on the way houses were going in California. Ma, he has not recovered from today. He visited California years back. He came to me when Oakland to, with his entire family. He came, he asked me for money for gas for the rental car. Until recently, I didn't know who I said. I gave somebody my ATM. It was Declan Samira said, she was the one I gave my ATM. Let me go and withdraw $200 to buy. They have relocated into poverty. Out of God's will. When I thought he came to greet us on a Sunday, then he called me on the side. He said, I know you are against this move. He said, but we will continue to talk. He said, but right now, we don't have money for gas. And I came out with an ATM card. I saw the class of mirror. I said, go to the ATM. <laughs> the pin is 1060. Go on. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't matter. You, the PLO can't take my money out. <laughs> so and my ATM is not over the places. So what is the stress? <laughs> so go to the ATM and put in 60 if money will come out. <laughs> I said, go there. Go and take money for them. Praise the Lord. We spoke a couple of days ago. May you not take one step that will crumble your entire destiny. Yeah. We spoke one, some days ago, was still the same thing. He says, it's too difficult. How do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? That is by just looking at, he said, I thought it's an opportunity for us to buy houses. 15 years ago. Five, 
15 years ago, sir. 15 years ago. And some people just came from another country, just moved within that 15 years, fresh, and they have bought a home. You that you were already on the ground, you saw something, you jump out. What God is saying to you this morning is this. Keep your eyes on the promise and the record and the integrity of God. Nothing negative, nothing else. All those things Satan is telling you, you are going to be stranded, you are going to be helpless, you are not going to be able to make it, you may not be able to pay your bill. It's a lie of the devil to put pressure on you to move away from faith. Now imagine when somebody told me, we can't find a building. And, and I believe the man was sincere. He only, he only just didn't know scriptures. He was sincere. He liked me. <laughs> he said, there is no building. I was living in Tracy. He said, I will suggest. He said, young man, why can't you start a church in Tracy? You may even get a building for free. And I told myself, I said, I will never come back to see this man again. Because he wanted to talk me out of God's will for my life. That's why I say it's your fault. You allow somebody to talk you out of God's will. You can determine who you give your ears to. I said, I won't come back to do this one again. You know what happened? Three years, exactly three years from when he told me there was no building in Oakland was why we bought Macato Boulevard building. Three years. Don't look at oppositions. Don't look at problems. Some of you, you have ventures. You have things you want to do. Let me close by this. There was another example. You know, before we moved to the Makato building. No, not Makato. Before we started at Capwell. It was me and this is Ayomi. We were looking for rental property. You see the property of opposite the Coliseum. Right by the Coliseum. The parking is part of the Coliseum parking. They were going to lease it for 3000 and I saw the agent. He said, where are our financials? I said, forget about money, we have money. <laughs> he said, where are the records? I said, don't worry. He said, well, I'm sorry, without financial, and we didn't have an account. <laughs> I, said, I said, is it to pay 3,000 a month? <laughs> he said, we can't give it to you if I don't see papers. We need records. I said, it's 3,000. Anyway, they didn't give us the building, and we walk away. Then three years after, we made an offer to buy a building in Oakland. And that same agent was the listing agent. <laughs> and he's been talking to our agent. So when we met face to face, he looked at me. He said, we have met before. I said, yes. He said, were well, you not the one supposed to lease that building? In, uh, in, on Eggenberger, I said yes. And you didn't have financial, I said yes. He said, oh, so you are with a different organization now. I said, no, the same organization. So now he had financial in his hand. So he said, he looked at the numbers. He said, but the same, he said, where did this financial come from? I said, I told you we have money. <laughs> and he could not understand where no financial to lease, now we have buying three years after. I said, I told you we have money. You say what you want to see. You see, when I used to say, this church has never begged, we have money. Somebody said I should stop saying it. I am confessing it, I will never stop. This church can never beg. This church has money. We have money. Don't you understand? That is what makes it work. I am calling those things that be not as though they were. It is spiritual wisdom. It is not pride. Even when I tell you I am very blessed, I am confessing for tomorrow. So how many blessed people are here this morning? many people here are blessed this morning? How many people are prosperous this morning? How many people here have a lot of money this morning? The Bible says 
you shall have what you say. So, and I say it all the time. I say, oh, we have money. <laughs> you know, I told somebody, I said, you know we have more money than you. <laughs> Sometimes it gets me into trouble, but that's fine. <laughs> but when you look at the positive of it, it has wasted the, the trouble. And the trouble are with people. But the good part of it is with God. Hallelujah. That is how God wants us to live. You confess what you want to see. This church can never be stranded. This church can never lack. And the people here are the church. So the people here can never be stranded. The people here can never lack. David says, I have been young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed beg bread. Is somebody hearing me? Whatever in your account is not what determines where you are financially. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches, not according to my account, according to his own riches. So we have a joint account of God's riches with God. So it doesn't have to take from my own account. It take from the richest account. You never stop saying what the Bible is saying. You have a glorious future. Don't let any man disqualify you from God's blessing. Some say, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. God cannot fail. I cannot fail. God cannot fail. Someone say, I cannot die. I will live to declare the glory of God. I cannot die. The Bible says, with long life will I be satisfied. I cannot die and until I am satisfied. No one, nobody dies around me. In the name of Jesus. Whatever God says is for me, is for me. Whatever God says is for me, is for me. And this confession, this shouting works. <laughs> when we're going to buy this building, right? When they show me this building, the agent told me they already have three offers. One from a medical company, one from a real estate company, real estate, mortgage bank, and a real estate company. And they offer 4.2 million and above. So I called the agent. I said, see, we won't offer that 4.2. We will offer 3.5. He said, but they already offer extra money. They can't lose money. I said, see, all those people, we have more money than them. Just wait. <laughs> I said, we have money than all of them. The mortgage bank, the real estate, forget about it. They don't have money. The medical company, they don't have money. We have more money than all of them. But that's how, what we want to pay. <laughs> we went back and forth. That's how much we paid You say it. Don't be timid to declare. Don't be timid. Don't let Satan shut your mouth. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I want to be hearing your report that you are talking right now so people are be getting mad. Yes. I want people to say, ah, these people, they are just talking anyhow. Let them say you are proud. That's fine. As long as you have testimony. That's what they're going to call it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's leave those hands to God and just worship the name of the Lord. Lord, we give you all the glory. I decree in the name of Jesus 
that whatever your people are able to declare, they will touch, they will experience, they will see this year. So shall it be. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. We may be seated. I we admonish you after service. You can see the media department in the back or the bookstand. The the first message, the first part of this message was at the night of miracle. Get it and listen to it and listen to it until you have it already. Praise the Lord. Let me have one of it. Just one. Just one. You can give, put it, send it to the bookstand. Send it to the bookstand. This was the one at the night of miracle. Tell them to make even this morning quickly. Let them make it together. Make it in one MP3. Get, now, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Somebody sent me a text last night and said, Pastor, the message you preach on Friday, let people listen to it in their car everywhere until it sticks. you will begin to see exploit upon exploit in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Anybody want this? Don't take it, you are too close. <laughs> it's our communion day. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask for your blessing over the communion table this morning. I decree as we eat your flesh and drink your blood that the fullness of redemption, the fullness of salvation will be established in our lives. Everything you promise shall come to pass. Lord, as we eat your flesh and drink your blood, I decree the blood against sickness and infirmity Amen. and the calendar of death Amen. be wiped out forever Amen. in the lives of every member of this church in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Jesus, precious name. The blood that Jesus shed for 